Audiobook Academy. Book Summary. Metamorphoses, Narcissus and Echo. By Ovid. Tiresias' prophesy gift is demonstrated in the mythical narrative of Narcissus and Echo. A dispute between Jupiter and Juno over whether women's passion is greater than men's led them to consult the prophet. Seven years as a woman convinced him that the desire of women is greater than that of men, and so Juno took away his sight, but Jupiter brought him relief. A gift of prophecy, which was demonstrated in the narrative of Narcissus, was bestowed to him by the gods. The story can be found in the third book, which is primarily made up of Theban tales. However, the myth of Narcissus is not a part of the Bacchus cult, nor does it have a Theban origin. Narcissus and Echo, Metamorphosis, Book 3 The prophet Tiresias was a household name in every city because of his ability to predict the future. Liriope had the same delusions as Liriope. The nymphs named their son Narcissus after her because they adored him so much. In response to the question of whether the boy will age, Tiresias gave a vague response. He explained to him that the only way he will be able to age gracefully is if he learns to know his own mind. That answer seemed meaningless until a specific occurrence occurred. It was no secret that Narcissus enjoyed the affection of both boys and girls by the time he turned 16. Although he had a kind face, he was cold and impersonal in his actions. He was caught by the nymph Echo while he was stalking a scared deer. Juno first discovered Jupiter with the nymphs before tracking down Narcissus. Echo kept Juno entertained so that the nymphs would leave her alone. When a goddess discovered what she'd done, she revoked her capacity to communicate verbally. She would only be able to speak after hearing what others had to say. When he approached her she identified herself as Narcissus and began following him. Even though she yearned for a closer relationship with him, she had no idea how to initiate communication with him. Waiting for the sounds of others to penetrate her, she then reflected them back. She answered when Narcissus inquired about the presence of anyone else. Despite Narcissus's insistence that they meet, she once again said nothing. Afraid of losing Echo, Narcissus chased after her, screaming that his death would be preferable to having her love. She went into hiding out of guilt and began a solitary existence in the woods and caverns, but the love she felt for him never left her. Her wretched body began to degenerate to the point where she was left with nothing except her voice. She snuck off into the woods, out of sight but not out of earshot. Echo and the other nymphs were loathed by Narcissus. As soon as a deity saw what he'd done, he commanded the heavens to allow Narcissus to fall in love, but to make it impossible for anybody else to do so. Beauty and water drew Narcissus to a location. The search had left him quite parched. That water source was never disturbed by a shepherd or an animal, and the jungle was impenetrable to the rays of the sun. Seeing as he was thirsty, he went to the source of the water to get a drink and was astounded to see a character, himself, floating in it. He began kissing the phantom of his own face. He was proud of who he was. He repeatedly stuck his fingers in the water in an attempt to obtain a glimpse of what he was seeing. He could have taken the image of himself with him when he left, but he couldn't. He couldn't stop glancing at his own body because he couldn't get enough of the way it made him look. As the trees grew closer, he wondered aloud if anyone had ever loved with such intensity. He was baffled as to why the man he saw would vanish whenever he tried to get close to him. It was he who told him that he could run away all he wanted, but that the nymphs also adored him because of his beauty. To describe it as his own reflection, he stated that it was. Because of his wealth, he realized he couldn't ask for more treasure. He was motivated to commit himself by the agony he was experiencing. Seeing death as the end of the pain made it easier for him to accept it. Narcissus slams his palms on his chest in agony because of love. Nothing remained of his former attractiveness now, not even his corpse. That made Echo feel sad for him even though he had injured her. In the spot where his body vanished, a yellow blossom with white leaves remained. Narcissus, Liriope's son whose faith was marked by Tiresias' prophecy in which he will grow old only if he knows himself. Although the nymphs adored him for his attractiveness, he was cold and soulless. He had little regard for the feelings of others and was only concerned with his own. He admired and was well conscious of his own attractiveness. For that, he was punished by falling in love with his own reflection in the water, and then he felt the misery he had inflicted on other people. In the end, he died. Echo, a very chatty nymph. She suffered as a result of her lack of regard for Juno and her vulnerability to the nymphs. She was a little shy, but she was incredibly patient, especially when it came to showing Narcissus how much she loved him. Her body decomposes and she is left with nothing but her voice. While Narcissus was dying, despite the grief he had given her, she felt sad for him. Thank you for listening in Audiobook Academy.
Don't forget to subscribe and smash that like button for more content like this. See you in next video.